Interesting facts about the Ashanti people. The Ashanti kingdom, also known as Asante, was one of the most prolific Africa has ever seen and reigned over a large part of present-day Ghana, all the way down to Ivory Coast for over 300 years. While the kingdom eventually fell apart in 1957, many of the traditions still live on. In fact, the Ashanti monarchy still continues though in a much smaller form inside Ghana. From its origins, to its long history, to its rich culture and fighting skills, here are some interesting facts about the Ashanti people. Hello, if you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification button so you get notified anytime you upload a new video. The Ashanti people first appeared in the historical record around the 13th century, and by the 17th century, they had built themselves into a great kingdom. According to Ashanti tradition, their rise to power occurred when a golden stool came down from heaven to rest upon the knees of the first Ashanti king, whose title was Asante Hene. The golden stool has remained a major icon of the Ashanti people and is believed to hold the souls of their nation. In practical terms, the Ashanti rose to prominence through economic trade. They first became wealthy by participating in Africa's slave trade which by the 17th century was a major priority for European nations settling in the Caribbean. They are the richest people in Ghana. It's no doubt that the Ashanti people are the richest people in Ghana due to many reasons that act in their favor. They are hardworking, risk takers and are business oriented people and very talented but added to this they have a large gold mine which is a great source of income. Their crafting and weaving skills also generate them huge sums of money. It is considered as the land of gold. Historically, we can confidently say the Ashantis are by far the richest sect of Ghanaians by birth. Born into riches, they are distinct for wealth by inheritance. Many Ashantis acquire their starting capital from their fathers and forefathers. They have something to build on from the start. The Ashanti kingdom is also popularly called the land of gold because it houses the biggest mines in the country. The Obwasi gold mine has for many decades been a hub for Ghana's gold mining activities elevating the country to a very good standing as one of Africa's leading gold-producing countries. They are risk-takers. Fearless, aggressive and smart are some words that can be used to describe the Ashanti's way of doing business. However, the most appropriate thing to say may be that they take risks and they dive in when they see a business opportunity. This may occasionally be detrimental and they may be on the losing end but trust them to come out on tops on most occasions. Most successful businessmen and women are the ones who take risks and venture into the unknown, work hard and make a way even when the path to success looks gloomy. If there are any group of people in Ghana who will readily explore an opportunity, then it is the Ashantis. Their belief in the golden stool power. The golden stool is sacred to the Ashanti and to today, they take great pride in it. There is an elaborate legend surrounding it that is told by the old men of Ashanti and it is believed that a golden stool descended from the sky and landed on the lap of the first Ashanti king. Ever since, the stool has been held in high regard. The golden stool is very carefully protected, though no one has ever sat on it, and since its arrival, neither has it touched the ground. Being an Ashanti symbol, the golden stool represents the worship of ancestors, well-being, and the people of Ashanti, as a symbol of nationhood, and because it contains the sum of souls of Ashanti, the golden stool is considered to be so secret that no person whatsoever is allowed to sit upon it. It is kept with the strictest security and precaution and is taken outside only on exceptionally grand occasions. Never must it come in contact with the earth or the ground. They had one of the largest African armies in history. Just like their name, which means because of war, to say the Ashanti kingdom had a large army would be an understatement because the Ashanti army was described as a fiercely organized one whose king could bring 200,000 men into the field and whose warriors were evidently not cowled by Snider rifles and 7-pounder guns. During its peak, the army numbered close to 200,000 people, making it larger than the Zulu army and as big as some of the armies in Ethiopia. The kingdom regularly deployed tens of thousands of soldiers at a time into the field, so it's no wonder they defeated the British on multiple occasions. Known for their skillful crafting, the Ashanti are noted for their expertise in a variety of specialized crafts. These include weaving, wood carving, ceramics, the well-known Kente cloth and metallurgy. Of these crafts, only pottery making its primary a female activity, the others are restricted to male specialties. 
Even in the case of pottery making, only men are allowed to fashion pots or pipes. Wood carving, on the other hand, is divided into many branches, each with its own specialties. Among the major products are wooden sculptures of outstanding artistic quality and the talking drums. Products of the wood carving include the Ashanti Facility Door or Aqua Bad Door, which is commonly found in the homes of the Ashanti and given to the females in the village to bring them closer to the spirit of fertility gods. Their unique dressing style. Being the rich people that they are, their dressing style is also rich. In its cultural context of use, kente is more than just a cloth, and like most of Africa's visual arts forms, kente is a visual representation of history, philosophy, ethics, oral literature, religious belief, social values, and political thought. Originally, its use was reserved for the royalty and limited to spatial, social, and sacred functions. When its production increased, it became more accessible to those who could afford to buy it. However, its prestigious status was maintained, and it was continued to be associated with wealth, high social status, and cultural sophistication. Today, in spite of the proliferation of both the handwoven and machine printed kente, the authentic forms of the cloth are still regarded as a symbol of social prestige, nobility, and a sense of cultural sophistication. Kente is used not only for its beauty but also for its symbolic significance. Each cloth has a name and a meaning, and each of the numerous patterns and motifs on the kente has a name and a meaning too. Names and meanings are derived from historical events, individual achievements, proverbs, philosophical concepts, oral literature, moral values, social code of conduct, and human behavior, which are certain attributes of plant and animal life. Their fighting skills. The Ashanti people have always been known as fierce fighters with the motivational slogan, if I go forward I die, if I go backward I die, better go forward and die. When the Ashanti tribe was faced with war, they used drums to signal the upcoming battle. The beat of these drums could be heard through the dense forest. The Ashanti have a special handshake in which you hold your left hand out to shake hands, which actually comes with the Ashanti explanation that the left hand holds the shield and the right hand holds the spears. So in order to show your trust in someone, you put down your shield and therefore have your left hand free. This might be mythical, but has been one of the reasons they are skillful fighters, added to their everyday training routines. There you have it, explorers. Interesting facts about the Ashanti people. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share. Don't forget to drop a comment at the comment section telling us which other tribe you would like us to talk about and we will kindly do so.